Good. Good evening, guys. Ken of Tortoise Capital. It is the Friday Night Strategy Podcast for February 12th, 2021. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got a couple case studies to do uh, for those of you that are sticking around a little bit later. Okay. Uh, as always, we'll start with the 30-day health check. Um, pushed to a new all-time high, 10-day high, 30-day high, all-time high at... Um, just around uh, three, nine, or four. Um, the uh, RL10 peaked and got flat. It's still in the summer. Uh, it is still above the uh, the peak of the price, so that is a warning sign for us. The baby dragon is above the peak of price as well. So next uh, Tuesday. I would expect that to roll over and uh, cross the baby dragon. Um, we did have a slight gap down, but a very strong finish on uh, average range and closed very strong going into the close. And uh, I think that's going to brief really well over the long weekend. And with the extra day on the weekend, um, again, there will be a lot of talk of the $2 trillion stimulus coming. That may generate some uh, some confidence of people that want to buy at the open on Tuesday. So the least surprising scenario to me would be a gap up in the morning, and then it's kind of all bets are off. Do they, is it a gap and trap where they're going to try and then reverse it to see what they can pick up uh, on the downside uh, to get their inventory back? Or is it going to gap and go uh, with buying pressure and reinforcing to now that it's at an all-time high, uh, we don't know. So that's what makes it. A, that's what makes it such an interesting game. So we have um, the peak RL10 and the RL10 price up here around 394. Um, we have Z2 at a little 393 and a half. Um, the actual 10-day, 30-day high, an all-time high over here, also at, uh, basically 393. Um, the slope of the um, uh, of the RL30 is just long and strong, driving on. Um, the dragon is starting to emerge from out of the river and has a really positive slope up as it shakes off this previous negative price data and is now dominated by the gains of the last 10 days. Um, the dragon itself is starting to narrow now that we've lost those um, wide volatility prices, so the dragon is compressing sharply. Uh, its spine is just almost on the edge of the river. Um, Bollinger Band mean at uh, basically 381, and Tuesday's piece are at that same level, so that's uh, solid support there. Um, fair value, long-term fair value, the RL270, that's the purple line, uh, 377. 10-day low on Tuesday will be here at uh, 376. Um, Z1, 375, Z2, and Z3. Here's the 30-day low. That's going to start creeping up here pretty quick as the 30-day range narrows. Um, I've added a couple horizontal lines here. So I'm hanging a 2.5% sell-off price level, you know, from the, like a chandelier exit would be right about in here, and then the 5% sell-off of here, the 10% is <coughs> just a little bit off the chart right now, but just as a frame of reference, um, truly the yellow zone, you know, for longer-term money and then more conservative money, the yellow zone is, would be a 5% sell-off. Um, uh, other than that, this thing is just long and strong and continuing to push to new highs, <clears throat> shaking off the political news, and willing to hold the highest price ever uh, going into the long weekend. That's hard to argue. Um, looking at the sectors real quick. <sighs> it wore me out at the soccer practice today. Um, 
Um, had the S and P at um, finished up strong at 0.5. The the uh, the non S and P 500 total market index, the completion index, was up 0.48. Uh, the Russell was up uh, 0.27. The Dow was uh, 0.11. Treasuries really cracked. Uh, gave back 1.24. Emerging markets. Yeah, right there, basically flat. So this was a story about the U.S. and equities. Um, and then the big winner, uh, the Q's at 0.56. So a solid performance on a Friday, and the final vote tally was up, going up. Right, so let's take a look at the symbols that led the way, or the sectors, I should say. Uh, tech was equal with the S&P at 0.51. Clean energy, 0.59. Fangs at 0.59. Japan, um, Mexico, lithium batteries, healthcare, wheat and precious metals, silver, art genomics, all the sectors, finance, and um, basic materials all kind of locked in between 0.6 and 1, so uh, middling strong. Uh, ARC Innovation 1.3, Energy 1.5, Bitcoin 1.9, Oil 2.5, Oil Exploration 2.9, uh, Ethereum 4.5, and then the Blockchain ETF crushing it 5%. Um, the symbols that did very well. Uh, Twitter, 4.9. Boy, that's just crushing. PayPal, 4.7. Squarespace, Squarespace, the other financial disruptor, 2.6. Devon Energy, 3.6. Uh, Alcoa, 1.26. Uh, Tesla, basically even with the market, 0.5. Underperforming sectors. Uh, Japan or uh, Brazil, two point two. Uh, discretion, the uh, staples point one five. Uh, discretionary point one four. Commercial real estate flat. Uh, S and P. Biotech at point nine one. Um, the VIX minus 3.3, that's a, that's a tell. Um, that was capitulation by the, uh, by the fearful, I guess. Um, companies that underperformed. So not that many sectors underperformed. Um, companies that underperformed, uh, Virgin Galactic minus 8%. Nikola, three and a half, NVIDIA, 1.9, Cliff, three quarters, Neo, uh, two thirds, US Steel and Cat, both slightly in the way. Um, I should have added uh, the marijuana at some point for some. Don't read into the short term memory loss. If you saw what I did there. All right, let's shift to the weekend report. Uh, for uh, uh, Eugene, Lisa, that's the, uh, we're going to go again at 8.30 tomorrow for the, uh, our story discussion. The uh, story prompt is uh, friendships. Uh, yeah, 8.30 Central. We'll also do the Swing Mastermind at 7 p.m. 
in, in that same OWL room, and then we'll shift to the uh, go to webinar room for the eight o'clock podcast. Okay. And tomorrow night's podcast at eight again, we'll be looking at um, day trading frames, and um, I, I will have some um, bar by bar exercises to do. Okay, so the weekend report, here we go. And that's available to you in the uh, handout section. Uh, bullish normal, uh, overbought on every dimension. Um, ADX is still neutral at 16.7, so it's still shaking off the effect of that earlier sell-off from last week. Uh, however, we are at risk on in the um, risk index and at a healthy 0.42 in the risk Z, so you can see that the uh, that spring has turned to summer. Now we're beginning to see the We'd like to see it get all the way up to Z plus two uh, and the growing season here. And um, all of our February holdings are crushing it uh, in the blended monthly rebalancing, all still doing really well. Um, XOP and energy were just excellent this week. PBW is pretty good. The Russell was very good. ETF2, theoretical exposure, still at 100%. Um, now for the, um, you know, market reviews, I added a couple extra ones. I just thought it would be instructive to take a look at extreme long-term so this one is an annual. Each bar is a um, an annual report. Let me scale it up a little bit here. So, yeah, oops, S and P yearly. And uh, there's some interesting stuff in this. Yeah, so I want you to notice the, uh, this was the internet boom right here. When fortunes were really made and what everybody now thinks is, well, that's normal. That's what's supposed to happen. Not so. This was the bursting of the internet bubble, a three-year miserable process at the time. Um, this was the grinding um, cyclic sector cycling bull. Uh, shorter moves. Um, it was a grind. This this one was uh, the financial crisis of two thousand and eight and nine. Part of that in nine was down here too. Before it recovered, the recovery came out of. 2009 for an amazing recovery. That was an amazing recovery uh, into uh, this was the that's when Clinton was supposed to be elected, right? 2015. And then this was the Trump boom. And then this was the COVID year that got crushed and then recovered. So this is on a log scale. So these are uh, these are relative. That that one year crush in COVID well, was as bad as the 2008, almost as bad as the 2008, so on. Uh, both of which make the internet bust um, feel routine almost. Uh, and then this is the good start so far, first six weeks of this year. Um, 
pinch in the uh, at Nota Staccata 2 entry here. This is a quarterly look. So this covers basically the same years. This goes back to like 90, I guess 93. Um, notice the Kata 2 entry. And the protection, the protective value of the PSAR and the Dragon to protect you against the, um, the internet bubble bursting. This is the internet bubble burst right there. Horrible at the time. Notice the Kata 2 entry. Notice the Owl protective stop and the, the protective power of the quarterly PSAR against the financial meltdown. Now notice a C minus 2 excursion and then the crossing of the baby dragon inside here. And then the, uh, the mother of all opportunities. The one, two, three exit. This is the COVID sell off. This is the COVID recovery. Um, that's the first phase of that recovery. And then notice the Caught a two entry and notice the emerging dragon entry. Another caught a two. So I'll tell you what the quarterly chart and the power of that PSR and even the dragon to protect you. I mean, how good is that? Should be taking copious notes on that. Um, now it makes the monthly feel almost aggressive. So this is going back into 2016. This was the, uh, you know, the Trump market sell-off. Like, oh, my God, Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. Um, the first little shenanigan sell-off. And have no fear of the recovery. And this is the magnitude of COVID. So, and COVID recovery has just been extraordinary. And now we're pushing past Z3, or Z2, I should say. Um, and all systems go. The, um, the PSARs on the monthlies are pretty powerful, too. Pretty good stuff. Cut of two, cut of Cut two, cut two. The dragon and the RL10 are your friend. Uh, weeklies, there's your COVID sell-off. There's your COVID recovery. Really, I'll say to here. Uh, and then a cut of two entry and crushing it. And that's the November shenanigans of the election. And this was the great recovery of the Democratic Senate, and Democratic presidency, and all systems go. Um, to me, on the weekly basis, that that's a pretty good stop in there, skin of the dragon, or the peace arm. So the point I want to make on all this is the uh, fractal nature of the sense-making framework of the RLCO and Bollinger Band and the Four Seasons of MACD. I mean, how good is this with the uh, winter, spring, summer, fall, summer? Summer, fall, summer, man, that makes that cottage too. We've already seen the daily, so I'm not going to come uh, blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. Um, so the leading candidates continue to do pretty well in the top three. Uh, 
real estate, which was looking like a pretty good defensive play last week. Still in a pretty good week. Pretty good week in month. And Treasury is just absolutely miserable. That's the risk-free rate of return. So I tell, tell myself that. ETF 22 adds uh, the XL series. And this is where you see the power of uh, energy, which is in that uh, that blended monthly rebalancing turned in a 5% week. Finance doing really well. It's a little better than tech. Although tech is starting to recover its form. Then the defensive plays down here just getting smoked. I should tell you all about all you need to know about risk on. That's uh, consumer staples, utilities, and treasuries just getting smoked. ETF 32, so there's our uh, clean energy did pretty well, but note the oil exploration, which is uh, which is in the core uh, blended monthly rebalancing, turned it an 8% week and a 9% month so far. So the Russell Energy and mid caps just smashing. China staging a nice recovery in here as is, I would say, tech. It's pretty strong in the one week and one month. I expect it to move up the stack. Dow 30, um, so Goldman, Intel, and Disney, big movers. J.P. Morgan went in the close fourth. And uh, I would expect to see more out of Microsoft here to build on its very strong one month and probably 3M and Salesforce. So I, I like looking at these one month outperformers in the greens. Then if he outperformed on a month, but the week was weak, then that may be just the pause that refreshes. And we'd be looking for some resiliency. It looks to me like uh, Caterpillar, Nike, and DuPont also got some work to do. They've had a really good six month, but only above average three months and an underperforming one month. So the, the shine is off the lily there. Um, sector spiders, Let's see tech really crushing things here. Telecom and energy. Shift to um, see regional reports so of the. U.S. is basically above average except for the Dow and the S&P. Uh, small caps of every type are crushing it. Asia is a mixed bag. Latin America and emerging markets doing pretty well. Um, you can just see how much small caps are really standing out from the other large um, indexes in the world. In the very broad asset classes, energy and oil is just on a tear uh, compared to the strength in, in the other sectors. The commodities, DBC is doing pretty well, but part of that is because 40% of DBC is energy. So that, that's almost a little bit simple with the broad energy baskets. The treasuries and gold are just no place to be. Um, the winners continued to win, so had a lot of green and green. The only new entrant into here was the really sharp outperformance of 
foil, you know, green and white makes it this was good, now great. You can exploit it as new strength. It's a new leader. But otherwise, it's your, you know, small caps and of all types. And uh, biotech really getting it done. So I still like Arc G. I think we're still in the early innings of that. That may be this year's um, PBW. You know, that, that stealthy, that stealthy trip. While well, everybody's still watching Tesla and currency or uh, um, Bitcoin. Um, these that are green in the ATR percentage are the ones that are exceptionally. Volatile, these are all exceptionally liquid, the top 30 on the basis of average daily dollar volumes. Energy and silver, very tradable. Brazil, very tradable. Uh, semis, gold miners, and biotech, all very tradable. Shifting to the daily report now. Let that come up on your screen. Yeah, Arc G is just getting it, um, uh, is still hitting it out of the park. As good as XBI is, Arc G is still. Um, have to persuade Ken Hum to do the little, um, the deep dive into the component like he did with PBW last week. I'd remind him. That's a good exercise. Uh, channeling and overreaction, no signals. Uh, Microsoft, Morgan, Coca Cola, and Salesforce and Goldman. That's a pretty good lineup of relative strength uh, leaders right there. Tesla continues to lag on 10 day max pain, as does Amgen and Disney. Dow 30, lots of dojis today. Let me let that come up on your screen. Um, American Express had the breakout today, as did Coca-Cola and Intel. And JP Morgan. Uh, Merck is of interest. It's a doji. 5.6 to 1 has been a real underperformer uh, over most of the last uh, time, time frames. Disney had a big pullback today after outperforming over the last 10 days, one month, three months. So that may be a buy on dip opportunity that's worth framing. For you swing traders. Only one little doji today in real estate. Otherwise, just a truckload of breakouts all across the board, except for treasuries, which is four. So this is just the market and uh, the strongest sectors just continuing to drive on. That's the way to keep playing. Some defensive plays test out well on the auto framer, but these are ones typically that are lagging. The deep value plays can be found in the RLF F chart. You know, uh, Proctor, Pfizer, Merck, United Health. No surprise that four out of five are in the uh, healthcare sector. The ones that are overheated, uh, JP Morgan, Intel, Boeing, Oil, blockchain. And just because the uh, relative strength leaders, I say they're overheated, doesn't mean they can't just keep going. That just may mean they're warmed up and continuing to run like scalded apes. Plenty of daily squeezes to choose from that are excellent. 
because of the low range today, but uh, Walmart and Apple stand out, as does McDonald's and Microsoft. Mid caps are in there. That's always a good idea. Um, the S&P is in there at 2.1 as well. Uh, the summer has now gotten back into dominance on the basis of this week's recovery. That's good. I like the ones that are early in the summer because there's more room for them to go if they have low Z's for. So Apple, Home Depot, Coke, and Cat are on my short list. And it looks like the globals in here are ready to play catch up. And I love the EM. In the multi time frame, multi uh, NDX look back here. Um, lots of good breakouts in the Dow, but really impressive performance in the broad ETFs um, with some just exceptional plays in the big fat indexes and the globals. So that's just guys hitting the buy button with all the money that's being printed, I think. It's, love you some tech right there. And that's everything I want to look at on the uh, weekend report. We'll be looking at some trade frames um, tomorrow and on Sunday. All right, we get to time for uh, time for a couple bar by bars. First one up. All right, uh, Lisa, are you ready for one here? So here's, um, we had a um, gap up and a harsh sell-off. And it came back and settled in to basically uh, just about ready for a, uh, an SSC right here at the yellow dot. Four is a uh, collapsing dragon on the, on the dragon. Five is a collapsing dragon off the RL10 uh, piece. Uh, six is a Z2 breakdown. To the upside, one is just a uh, Z1 breakout. Three is a Z2 breakout. Two is just symmetrical. And also an emerging dragon off of this hump right here. I would bring that across and line up pretty nicely with the pump of the dragon. Okay. All right, Eugene, take good care and uh, concur on ArcG and uh, the other note that you sent me earlier. Take good care. All right, Lisa's going to go one and four, and let's see, long at one, short at four, second position at two, you mean two and five? Something like that. I think um, I think you should also consider uh, just getting long at at zero. I think you should consider. I think you should consider that and treat this as a uh, 
That would be an SSC entry right there. Right, let's give that a try. And then your uh, your if your stop is at four, that's like a a perfect collapsing drag. That's a uh, uh, belly of the dragon. If you wanted to set this up as a mechanical SSC, you might have your stop at five, so you would get long at zero, and stop at five, and Wu Wei exit. You just leave it alone. Uh, but if you put your stop at four, that allows you to have twice the position size because you have half the risk per share. Second position is in. So if I had the, uh, if I was doing the way uh, exit, you know, that, that would be here. But uh, if your stop was here and you got two positions in, um, wouldn't surprise me to see you do something like that. Maybe here. Uh, to the dots. All righty. Third position in. Probably something like that, maybe. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh, you're so lucky. Fourth position. Put that like right at the uh, southern skin of the dragon. See, this is also one of those where, you know, the technique we looked at yesterday, you know, by adding two positions here, if, hoping that it would blast across the VWAP, but then having a real tight stop, it would have uh, you'd have to be quick to stop and exit. Whereas just putting the one on allowed us to get a to keep a wider stop. But now we're here. Okay. We really want to see it get above. Um, this this VWAP over in here. If we can get above like that dotted blue line, that would be excellent. And probably excellent too. Um, so let's come on. Put count. One, two, three, and minus one, so two. So plus two. Um, reframe. That would be the Bollinger Band mean and probably like an um, RL10 breakout. Let's 
So it would be Z2. Maybe C3. Something like that. Okay. How's that look? Long one. Still in a now in kind of in a Z3 pinch. Still long one. Has broken out above your entry. Now you might want to say you want to keep your second position up here where it is or do you want to bring it down to like a Z3 pinch breakout or do you want to just add a second position now since it's just turned to the summer and it didn't fail and it had a higher low in the RL10. I agree. Second position in. Now you might want to, in order to keep the risk the same, you might say, let me put the, let me just tighten the stop. So I'm still only risking the 1R. You see what I mean? You had no additional risk, but now you doubled your position size. And that should be a stop and reverse because it would have broken through the uh the belly of the dragon right so now your next choice is what to do for a third position is do you want to wait for the z3 breakout do you want to break for this wait for this one or do you want to just add a third position now So you could add like here, add a third one here. Okay. Now, uh, fourth one, if it gets above the previous Z3, or unless we can see a better reason. All right. Third position in. That would be the southern skin of the dragon right there. This would lock in um, a gain on the third position. Like a little wedge. And put the fourth one on now. Concur. And take the higher exit. Okay. Be nice if one of these worked out for a change. Still okay. Still okay. And working.
there's your Bollinger Band mean exit. There is your PSAR exit. Stop greedy. Bollinger band mean exit. There's your spine of a dragon. I mean, why not? Why not just keep moving that stop up? Fair enough. All right, so let's get our, um, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, seven on the first one, seven on the second one, six and a half on the third one, and six on the fourth one. So that's 14 and 12 and a half. That's 26 and a half. Oh, shit. And how about that? Even more? Kata 2. Kata 2. Z3 breakout. Pardon my language. So you got 26 to this first one. Hey, here was 26 and you thought you were done? You can see the power of double on that position on failure to fail and then cutting the risk in half. That's pretty smart. So that that one was 26. And this one shows every sign. And you probably get an exit. Up in here. That would get you out when the baby dragon crosses and the RL30 rolls over. You probably would have gotten a fourth position about here, which would have scratched. So if we use standard position sizing again, we can just go there's your risk. So one, two, Three, four, five, six on the first one, five on the second one, three on the third one. Six, five, and three is 14. So total deal of the day, 40R blockchain, 40R blockchain. 
and you probably keep a piece as the um, keep a piece as a swing trade. That's what you call turbo. This is what that looks like now on a um, on daily charts. That is some kind of move right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Um, okay, let's uh, let's see who else we got. Chi Wang, you ready for one? Okay. So this one is a uh, This one had some early volatility, ran all the way up to here, collapsed all the way back down to the opening, and has now given us what looks like uh, uh, an SSC. So um, yeah, we're sitting right on, right on the upper skin of the dragon. We could take zero as a SSC, or we could wait for one is a crossing of the Bollinger Band mean, two is a like a VWAP cross, and I'm going to raise three up a little bit, um, even though that's symmetrical. I'm, I'm going to leave three; it's symmetrical. Four is a. Um, uh, basically, the collapsing dragon on the on the RL10. Five is a new low of the day, and front running the Z3. And then six is a confirmation of the breakdown. So you're looking at uh, long at zero, second at one. Yep, kind of the standard SSC play. So you're looking at second one at one, entering at zero. Just taking it now. Stop and reverse at four and add at five. Okay, got it. Second position in at one. Oh, I'm sorry, not quite. We will on this next move, I think. Yeah. I saw it peeking through. This would be your, um, this would be a PSAR stop right there. Uh, do you want to adjust, adjust your stop at all? You can take one unit of risk out by just doing that. And then protect. That's just below the Bollinger Band mean and would give you no lose plus dinner for two. It's a little tighter, but it does turn it into a no-lose position. Um, 
I didn't ask you about a, we're, we're just going to play two positions on this one. We're going to say that you had a, a couple positions already in the, in the blockchain. So you only had two bullets to use on this one. Um, so price has now moved up to, um, Uh, up to here, up to two. This is where, when we have these other reference points from the previous, uh, from the tre previous stack, we can start thinking about, um, you know, bringing references over as far as confirmation of excellent moves. Maybe this one feels correct, like right about here. Uh, that would get above the Z3 excursion and take out the hump of a dragon in there so that if it gets above that, um, above that blue line, then this thing is probably good to go. And if, if it, like I would say, if we call this two and this three, if it gets above two, then all of this last sell-off is clearly negated. If it gets above three, uh, then it's long and strong and continuing to march. Right? So on this one, since you're only going to play with two positions, it probably you're really now thinking about locking in gains. This would be a conservative lock. This would be an aggressive lock. So let's go conservative. It's had one test to the VWAP. You could be at the VWAP conservatively, or you could aggressively come up here and, and really protect. I kind of like that. That's the edge of the river. Which one do you like? The VWAP or the edge of the river? Yeah, I agree. Protect the river. So this one was down here. And probably followed the PSAR. Then accelerate to protect the river. That's not a bad path. And yeah, the RL10 is rolling over, touch the baby dragon. Yeah. And then that makes a nice game. So that one uh, looks like it wins. One, two, two and a half on the first one, and then one and a half on the second one. So that gives you four. And uh, if you reframed, you might do top of the RL10 to the VWAP. And you might play um, maybe a Z2 breakout. This is one where I would actually think about, you know, if I was ever going to double up early, I'd probably double up early. But um, maybe not. So and then on the downside, I would say we probably want the VWAP. You could either play the wide yellow box or take half a box. It's closer. Your your standard risk is probably closer to to the box uh, to half a box, I should say.
The next logical entry would be like below the Bollinger Band mean aggressively or a break out of the river or a collapsing dragon. Any of those would be reasonable. If you split the difference on that, actually, I would leave, I guess I would kind of leave that that Bollinger Band trade on. Bollinger Band mean. Yep, half the box. Okay, let's see what we all right, so we'd have gotten short. Uh, on the collapse. Um, you would have gotten long on the stop and reverse here. Um, get a second position at the emerging dragon. That's our two positions. And we kind of like this one because it's still, it's now above the, that previous blue line we, we drew before. Um, now your, your stop is probably like this. So you had this, and now you could probably lock in that for no lose plus dinner for two. So you missed, you were minus one on that one, so you're at plus three for the day. That one uh, locks in a, about half an R. So that gives you about three and a half so far. Um, if we reframe this one. There's, again, the top of the uh, RL10. This is the breakdown of the Bollinger Band mean. So maybe something like that. And then use half the box. Okay. There's our massive, our massive gain. There's one. You probably take this one on the Z3 because of the Z3 breakout in, up in here. That, that's about the same size you had on before. Um, your risk box. Um, is this? This was that standard risk that you had before. Um, and now your stop probably needs to be, again, no lose plus dinner for two. Um, bold correction. Just lock it in. Lock it in. And when it cracks, it cracks. And so the winds are so uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six on the first one, five on the second one, that's 11 plus three, so you're at 14 on Devon. 
This is Devon Energy. Gets into a Z3 pinch, probably grinds out the rest of the day. So that's about 16R. So that one gave you four. This one gave you minus one. The reversal gave you plus uh, 11 for, so for, for 14R. Okay. So good work. And again, this is the, the idea to explore on this one was this notion of how we get these anchor points at those major turning points for our trades. And then we can use these other, these other reference points as a congestion zone here. And then if it breaks out above this, then that thing, you notice how once it breaks out, it just really goes. Uh, that relief from tension. Well, block is just a mover. It's, I mean, here's why you know block is going to be a mover anyway. Uh, the daily chart tells you it's going to be a mover. The fact that uh, crypto is crushing it. Um, it gapped up, it gapped up above the previous day's high, and once it broke out above that again, off it's going to go. Um, compared to the others, symbol, so the other thing I look at is, I want you to notice too, the, um, so on the left-hand side, which we're not, we're not managing uh, on, you know, like the portfolio of choices, but I have that stack of symbols on the other side. So what I do is intraday is just keep that sorted by uh, the percent gain so far. And then all of the really exceptional movers run to the top of the stack. The other thing is, if you take a look at the TC2000 package that Danny has, um, that has ways of showing that intraday as well using the uh, slope of the regression lines and all that stuff. But really, for me, it's the, um, the ones that are set up to be framed are ones that were big movers the previous day and are relative strength winners on the 10-day. And blockchain has absolutely been that. It's just been, the whole cyber compound or cyber complex has just been crushing it. So I'm, I'm always poised uh, to make them work um, and, and to get on them early, right? So here's a, here's a way that you might do that too. So if you take this, um, if you take yesterday's daily, right, and you just put that box on it, any violation above or below that comes out of that box, and let me draw, let me uh, show you which one we need here. Anything that comes out of this box today is going to be a signal for a real powerful move, right? And if you go back here to the previous box where there was a, you know, the previous all-time high, if it comes above those two lines, let me just draw these references now, that yellow line or a blue line, and then this, those two lines are really crucial. I'm going to try to draw, to draw that box now. So if it breaks out above those two, it's going to be amazing. So now when we look at that, let's go look at the intraday now.
So these um, these two price levels here, when those were violated, you knew that there was no resistance overhead whatsoever. But you already had, you don't even have to know that it's a mover, just that blockchain has potential to move. But there's a Kata 2, and there is a Z3 pinch breakout, just like we traded it. And it turns into, so those are like, those are such low risk entries that you can get those placed and then and then let them go. And then when it breaks above these blue lines, you could just be automatically adding position here and here, and then you then you collect that big move. And you know that blockchain is a champion directional mover intraday, so it should already be on your short list. Now I've got 40 symbols on there, but when I'm tracking those intraday, I probably have 10 that are the ones that are poised to move the most on the basis of their daily and 10 day ranges. Uh, and so it's, and then on my screen, I'll have anywhere from eight to 10 mini charts so I can see them moving. And then I can just watch the flashing green lights over here as they're moving up and down in the stack. And if the market's going up, I just, I want the ones that sort to the top of the list. So there's some videos on doing that um, in the uh, in the course of that, in the hybrid course. But that's as simple as it needs to be. If you get some, you get your top 10 reliable intraday movers, um, you're good to go. Most of the ones on my list here are, are really just references, like the XL series, in order to quickly find a symbol that's moving. Okay. All right. That's everything I want to cover for tonight. And uh, we'll see the story.